Silencers, which are also referred to as suppressors, are known for taking the noise level of cartridges down to hearing safe, or pretty close to hearing safe. Most of the time it's not going to be Hollywood quiet. <laughs> oh, that was pretty close. Anyways, no matter how quiet you think... But anyways, no matter how quiet you think it is, you should always use hearing protection. The goal of today's video, though, is not to see how quiet the suppressors are, but to see how much performance benefit they add. Now you may be thinking to yourself, what exactly did he mean by performance? And basically, in this video, performance is going to refer to velocity. What I'm wanting to know is how much the velocity changes with and without the suppressor on there with these five cartridges right here. Also, with the rifles, I want to see how much it changes the point of impact. As usual, we're going to go ahead and start small and work our way up. So how about we start with the 9mm? You see, the thing about the 9mm is that it's really not burning that much powder, so it's pretty efficient in short barrels, meaning that it's getting just about a full burn in short barrels. So I really don't know if the extra length of the suppressor is really going to help it out that much in terms of velocity. And I really hope it doesn't decrease the velocity, but let's go ahead and see. Looks like with that five shot group, we were getting an average of 1188 feet a second with a standard deviation of 11.6 with that 115 grain bullet. All right, now that we got that velocity, let's go ahead and throw a suppressor on there and see if that 115 grain FMJ benefits at all from having a suppressor on there. Looks like we got three feet a second higher with a suppressor on there with the 115 grain load. An increase of only three feet a second between a suppressor and no suppressor? Come on now, that means it really didn't change the velocity of that 115 grain load at all. But I got one more load that I want to test in the 9mm real quick. And that's this 147 grain subsonic load. Well, I would definitely say that those 147s were subsonic with an average velocity of 974 feet a second and a crazy low standard deviation of 4.4. That is crazy low. Anyways, let's go ahead and see if a suppressor has any change at all in the velocity of these subsonics. Well, the subsonic was getting an average of 980 feet a second with a relatively high standard deviation of 22.6. That means that with a suppressor, the subsonic was getting an average of 6 feet a second higher than without the suppressor. So I think it's safe to say that at least with standard loads, non plus P, the 9mm is really not benefiting at all from having a suppressor on the end. At least with the velocity. Up next is what I consider to be a better millimeter than the 9mm, and that's the 10mm right here. As you can see, it's quite a bit larger than the 9mm, so hopefully this extra powder will give it a little bit of a boost with the suppressor on there. That 10mm definitely has a little more juice than the 9mm with that 180 grain averaging 1183 feet a second with a standard deviation of 14.6. As you could see, the magneto speed was definitely not set up for this Glock. I don't think I would do this test again. With the suppressor, that 180 grain load out of the 10mm was going an average of 1212 feet a second with a standard deviation of 15.1. That means that with the suppressor, the 10mm was literally averaging 29 feet a second higher than it did without it. That's a pretty substantial amount, especially considering how low of a velocity it is. In the grand scheme of things though, neither one of these cartridges are really burning that much powder compared to most rifle cartridges, so... I really wasn't expecting that much of a difference between the suppressor and no suppressor. Anyways, I think this means that we better go ahead and step it up. Our first test is going to be with this 16 inch 308 setup right here. Now I think a suppressor is really going to help it out because most 308 loads are not going to get a full burn within 16 inches, so that extra length should help it out quite a bit. The other thing that we have to keep in mind though is that with semi-automatic rifles like this, Part of the pressure comes back through this tube right here to cycle the bolt carrier group. Whereas with a bolt action, all of the pressure is just exiting out the muzzle. Suppressors usually keep pressure in the system a little bit longer, which causes more gas to go back towards the bolt carrier group, if you don't have an adjustable gas block. Anyways, we'll have to go ahead and see how this affects the velocity. Not only are we going to be taking the velocity with the rifles, but we're also going to be shooting groups at 100 yards with and without the suppressor to see if it changes the point of impact at all. The first load that I'll be testing is a 147 grain FMJ, and then the second load that I'll be testing is a 165 grain soft point, just to see if there's big velocity gain differences between these two weights. Well, it looks like with that 147 grain FMJ 308 load, we were averaging 2610 feet a second with a standard deviation of 16.3. 
Walking up on the target right here, it's pretty evident that that rifle does not like that 147 grain FMJ load. Looks like the 165 grain soft point fired out of the 308 was going an average of 2516 feet a second with a standard deviation of 17.8. Apparently that 308 rifle is really not a fan of the 165 grain soft points either. I'm hoping that the suppressor not only adds a little bit of velocity on those loads right there, but also shrinks up the groups quite a bit, because those are terrible. With the suppressor added, that 147 grain FMJ load was going an average of 2619 feet a second with a standard deviation of 14.8. That's literally only 9 feet a second faster than it was without the suppressor, so I'm pretty convinced that the suppressor did not do anything to increase the velocity. Overall, from what I could tell, the suppressor may have shifted that point of impact up slightly, but the main thing it did was tighten up that group substantially. I'll make sure to mark these ones for the next test. There we go, I think we're good to go now. With the suppressor, that 165 grain soft point was going an average of 2,524 feet a second with a standard deviation of 11.9. That means that with the suppressor, the 165 grain soft point was literally only going 8 feet a second faster than it was without it. That is virtually the same results as the 147 grain FMJ. Even though that suppressor really didn't add any velocity with that 165 grain load, one positive thing it did do was shift the point of impact up a little bit, and it tightened up the group considerably. I mean, that's way better. Still not great, but way better. This is a bolt action in 30-06 with a pretty short 18-inch barrel, and I know it's not the most efficient barrel length for the 30-06, but here's the thing. I really don't care because this is one handy rifle. The thing that I'm wanting to figure out, though, is that because it's a bolt action rifle, all of the pressure should be exiting the muzzle, so is the extra length of the suppressor enough to bring back all the velocity that's lost out of this short barrel? Let's go ahead and check it out. I guess I was wrong about that 18 inch losing so much velocity because that 165 grain soft point was literally averaging 2743 feet a second, but the standard deviation was also crazy at 41.9. That's just about the highest standard deviation that I've seen, but that's only about 60 feet a second less than what the box was claiming in terms of velocity, so that's pretty impressive right there. Okay, something is up with these rifles today because that is a freaking terrible group. <music> With the suppressor, that 165 grain soft point was averaging 2761 feet a second with a much lower standard deviation of 21.4. There was only an 18 feet per second increase by adding that suppressor onto the 18 inch 30-06 barrel. That's really not that much. Well, this group definitely isn't going to be winning any bench rest competitions, but it did shrink quite a bit with the suppressor on there. The last cartridge that we're going to be testing is a 7mm Remington Magnum fired out of this 26 inch setup right here. I really don't have any expectations anymore after what has already happened, so let's see what happens. Looks like that 162 grain SST was getting an average of 3,102 feet a second with a standard deviation of 17.1. Well, I hope you weren't coming here for good groups because that one is absolutely terrible. That is definitely the worst group of the day. I've had bad luck with Superformance before, but that is ridiculous. I really hope the suppressor can shrink that up a bit. Well, this is the first time that this happened, but the average velocity with the suppressor on there was actually lower at 3,088 feet a second with a standard deviation of 6.1. That's a lot better standard deviation though. Surprisingly, especially compared to all the other tests, the 7mm Remington Magnum had more velocity without the suppressor than it did with the suppressor. It was only 14 feet per second, but still. I don't know what kind of magic that suppressor did, but I am very thankful. That group is way better than this one up here. It shifted the point of impact down quite a bit as well, which is surprising compared to the other groups. Based on the groups in today's video, I mean, if you can even call them groups at all, there's really not a key takeaway, other than putting a suppressor on a rifle that was not zeroed with one on, is probably going to shift your point of impact a little, and it could be in just about any direction. Anyways, the real purpose of today's video was to see what the velocity differences were with and without a suppressor, so here's going to be all the velocities that we got with all the different cartridges. Surprisingly, the 10mm actually gained the most velocity out of any of the cartridges tested, which I was really shocked with, especially considering 
considering that I was using a pretty weak 10 millimeter load. But what's even more surprising in my opinion is that the 7 millimeter Remington Magnum actually lost velocity by putting a suppressor on there. That is absolutely freaking insane. I never in a million years would have guessed that the 7 millimeter Remington Magnum would have actually lost velocity by using a suppressor on there. But that's essentially why I wanted to do the testing in the first place. But there's one thing that we have to keep in mind and that's that I used one handgun or one rifle per cartridge only using one to two loads per cartridge as well and not switching out the suppressor so depending on what exactly your setup is you could definitely see some different results anyways i really hope that you enjoyed today's video thanks so much for watching and remember don't let ballistics drive you bananas <laughs> <laughs>